growing up with you as our father was a joy and a blessing. We grew up realizing that we had been born to a special man who carried with him the weight of Africa's challenges. For a man who found himself in the midst of women-only household, a women-only household, you somehow managed to expertly navigate the arguments and disagreements peculiar only to women with such grace and wisdom. With you, we, we knew we'd always have a fair hearing, even if you ultimately admonished us to forgive each other, no matter who felt like they were in the right or wrong. In spite of your gigantic schedule, you were always so present in our lives never missing any activities we participated in, be it sports, plays, or recitals, to the extent that you recently accompanied Corday and Clocor to their back-to-school old student speech day at Wesley Girls High School as a proud parent, 20 years after they had left school. Even as adults, you would show up to the hospital if we, our children, or even our spouses were taken ill. Your love for us earned you such names as Atukwe Dada, Hype master, body or bra, and bra. You were so proud of us and made it a point to celebrate all our achievements at every opportunity. As an answer to the question we usually got from people, that is, what is it like having Atukwe Okai as your father? Here's a brief response. Our experience of the man in a nutshell. Our father was a man of the people. He lived simply and loved deeply. He made friends easily, and his friendship span across people of varying backgrounds, young and old, across continents, irrespective of color, creed, political affiliations, or pedigree. To him, since God made all men equal, who was he to pick and choose who to shower with love? At every opportunity, he was quick to glorify God, extolling the virtues of his creator and his creations. Oh, Daddy was a remarkable man. And anyone who interacted with him always left having felt his heart, his purity of spirit, no malice, only strength, dignity, and love. Daddy, I'm really going to miss you. I love you very much. It's truly difficult to accept that you've moved on to the other side, that you are no longer here with us in the physical. You were so full of life that we felt we'd have you with us forever. When your ears caught the familiar Ga worship tunes that mom was humming, you asked us to join her, making sure everyone participated. As we gathered around your bed singing and worshiping, you sang along with a joy that was palpable. Daddy, we love you dearly. To the world, you were Atukwe Okain, the cultural activist, poetic genius, but to us, you were simply Dada. You may have gone ahead of us, but you've left us with so many memories to last us several lifetimes. Truly, this is a credit to how much life you packed into your 77 years here on Earth. And it will be such a great reunion when we finally meet in the presence of our Almighty Father. Atukwe Dada. Dada. Da. Bode Shoande. Your powerful voice will reverberate throughout the ages. Your footsteps, larger than life, are imprinted in the sands of time. Your life shall remain a sterling example for generations to come. Your legacy is forever intact. You, Daddy, have risen in glory, God's glory. From your biggest fans, Kode, Kloko, Klokai, Klocho, and Fufu. We love you. Oh, and I especially now look forward to... I always was unamused every time you'd come into our room and I'd feel somebody scratching my ankles <laughs> and I'd wake up and realize it was you asking for your special tea at dawn. And now, and now that's all I really am. That's what I wish I had. Again, we love you.